We, we use a livestock monitoring program, which is the Stock Care Program. A lot of you will be familiar with that, and developed by Chris Mulvaney, who I think has one, been one of the most innovative, uh, and I have to say, being part of his program, ruthless thinkers about agriculture. And it's based on a very simple premise that, the, that you divide ewe condition or cow condition or whatever into five categories. At either end, you've got one which is emaciated, right at the other end, which is a beast. People struggle to know what's a good weight for livestock. And, well, it's quite simple, really. If you walk down the street and you say to somebody, well, he's in good shape or she's in good shape, they'd be condition score three. And there are real penalties for being either side of that. If you're underweight, the level of your production is really, really affected. You'll be much more subject to disease, parasites, all those sort of things. And if you're overweight, just in the same way as humans overweight, there are penalties about that too, in terms of metabolic diseases and so on. This is a pretty good indicator, pretty good barometer of where you are with your stocking with your stocking ability. So if you've got a hell of a lot of condition score to use, and the New Zealand average is about 2.5, I might say, they are giving you a message that either you're not feeding them well enough or that the sort of stuff that you're feeding is not good enough. Similarly, if you've got fours and fives in your flock, that's saying, hey, fellas, this is all about wasteful. Instead of pointing that extra kilograms onto me, put it into a few more ewes instead. Because that is the sweet spot on condition score three, where good things happen for animals. Our objective, the sort of mantra is we would like to have 85% of our ewes at condition score three, four years out of five. So what are our livestock reflecting to us at the moment? They're telling us that there's a very destructive pattern of fluctuating body weight and condition uh, throughout the year. And that we're not alone in this, but it's particularly, it was particularly severe when we started this program. We're also telling us that when we have to pick them up from having dropped in condition, there's a very big cost to that, because generally, it is in the season and we use the type of feed that should be allocated to finishing prime lambs or cattle. So this is what their livestock are telling us about their nutrition. They're saying in the spring to us, you're not giving us enough because these pastures are not growing enough when we really need it now for lactation and all those things. And in the summer, you know, there's, a, there's too damn much of it and it's going off, it's all going to seed. And when it comes to the autumn and the winter, when you're trying to make us uh, clean it up, it's simply unpalatable. It's indigestible and we can't use it. So it's all a matter of your property's balance. It's a very simple process. If you've got an irrigated farm, a mid canopy, a dairy farm or whatever, your production only shifts about 10% or so a year from one year to the next. And if it's a bit dry or if it's a bit cold or whatever, you can plug in some palm kernel, urea or whatever, or feed out a bit of silage. If you're on a hill country farm but you've got a big amount of flats, then it's, it, it's manageable because those hill country pastures aren't absolutely vital to this live you probably. And in some dry hill country, and this is why I'm going to say what I'm putting up today has less relevance for summer dry country, what tends to happen is that the summer dry, the advent of summer drought, takes care of all that summer surplus. It simply gets too dry for it to grow. And the second thing that it happens, it preserves that feed like a good hay crop. On our place, if we get that huge peak growth, it then falls over and rots and it gets wet and it gets dry and it leaches and it's dreadful stuff. So what I'm talking about is particularly relevant for the South Island moist, uh, cold, hill and high country. It still has some relevance because we've had groups from Southland 
We've had groups from Thai happy looking uh, at what we're doing. And when I explain what uh, what we're doing and what we what we have at home, they say, yep, you're talking about our place too. So I think it's got some relevance. A key message from this video is that if you have surplus feed, which we often call tag, in a summer dry environment, that tag is dried off and it becomes maintenance feed. As long as it doesn't get wet, it will be standing hay in the paddock and have an ME of about eight. But if it's brown tub dominant or we get a wet summer, or you're in a summer safe area where that tag develops, then the moisture actually starts that feed decaying and the quality of that feed becomes below maintenance. So controlling tag is a pretty important part of both summer dry and summer safe hill country.